Welcome to the 11th video in the course, double asset liquidity pools. So here we're going to find a lot of the more higher interest um, yielding pools, liquidity pools, and staking methods. This is where I particularly partake in uh, staking. You know, I have some in the single asset but and, and the governance, but uh, double asset is where I would say most of my staking lies just because of that high interest and the ability to earn with a small amount of money. So let's get into it. When staking to two asset pools, keep in mind that in order to enter them, you need what are called LP tokens or liquidity pool tokens. These liquidity pool tokens represent the two assets that you or that the liquidity pool you want to enter consists of. So the purpose of the LP token is to reduce your two assets to one. So basically you're taking your two assets and reducing them down to one so you can enter this pool. Uh, majority of pools work this way. The ones that I have found and used work this way. So just keep in mind when you want to enter a two asset pool, it's not as simple as going to that two asset pool and staking 50-50 or just staking your assets to that. You have to first get this LP token that represents that pool. And we'll get into all that if that didn't make sense, don't worry. So an example of this is there's a two asset pool you want to enter. The two assets of that pool are USDC and Ethereum. In order to enter that liquidity pool, you must first acquire a singular LP token that represents those two assets for that specific pool. Every platform tends to be a little different when acquiring these LP tokens, like it's not always gonna be the same. Um, when trying to get these LP tokens, sometimes you have to navigate a little bit throughout these platforms to find, um, but usually it'll be pretty simple. You know, when I've, from my experience, it's been pretty simple. Um, and after you do it a few times, it's, you know, you tend to know where to look. So I'm gonna show you Flare, Flare Finance, we went through on the single asset staking. I'm gonna show you Flare for an example on the LP tokens. Okay, so here we are. We are on Flare Finance right now. This is the desktop version. So I showed you that, you know, you can use it on mobile. You could also use it on desktop. I just find it a little bit more complicated to use on desktop because um, MetaMask, you would use MetaMask. You can use MetaMask with this, um, with Flare Finance, but you have to, um, just the, the user interface and like the user connection between MetaMask and fi the Flare Finance is not as like, seamless and simple as it is with Bifrost. And so, so that's why I recommended Bifrost in our last video. It's just because I find it much more simpler. You can do the governance staking right through Bifrost. I didn't show you that. Um, that's something we will get into. But, um, you know, it's, I just find it much, much simpler. And just hearing from other people's experiences, Bifrost is simpler. So, that's just what I do. If you want to use MetaMask, you simply just add the network to your wallet. Um, and it's actually simple to do. So let's just get right into this. I just want to show you an example of the double asset pool quick. So you know what I'm talking about. Um, but anyway, we're going to connect our wallet. We're going to do the test. Test wallet. Connect. And that adds it right to our wallet. Like this is going. So we're going to switch to Canary, Songbird Canary Network. Look, it adds it right to us. Songbird Canary Network. It's going to add it right to our wallet. So you don't even have to go through the process of adding the network. So it's simple in that regard. But when it comes to, you know, the governance staking, um, it's not even governance staking. It's just their own type of con consensus. It's like, F it's called FTSO, um, being an FTSO provider. Uh, but anyway, so just to give you an example of a, a double asset pool. So look at these. I showed you these in the last video, but we have, I kind of showed you them, but this is a double asset pool right here. So you have Songbird, SGB, and Canary Dollar, Candy. This is the Songbird Canary Dollar liquidity pool, okay? Then you have this double asset pool here, SFIN and Canary Dollar. And you have this double asset pool, XFI Canary Dollar. So there's several of them. As you can see, there's many. There's, there's only six of them here only five that you can use right now. So there's five different double asset pools on this platform. Um, in order to enter these pools, like if I were to, let's allow this quick. Just gotta allow it and sign the transaction. 
So you need SGB in order to do this. I don't have SGB in this account. I only have it on Bifrost, but um, it's not really important right now. But if you wanted to enter this pool though, if you wanted to enter SGB and Canary Dollar, I'm going to give you um, my strategy and a strategy to enter these pools later on. I just want to show you this so you know what I'm talking about as we're going along. Okay, so you have this SGB Canary Dollar liquidity pool. So let's say we want to enter that. You have to first get an LP token that represents these two assets, okay? And to get that LP token, you would come to Flare X. And that's just specific for this network here, this platform. You need to go to Flare X, and this is the strategy to do it. And so what was it? We wanted to enter the SGB Canary Dollar pool, okay? So what we would do, makes it a little hard because I can't, navigate through this stuff because I'm on desktop. Um, but anyway, if I wanted to enter this pool, or yeah, if I wanted to enter that pool, I'd have to get LP tokens. So I come here, it says I my LP tokens right now is zero. In order to get one LP token or any LP tokens, I have to provide a 50-50 ratio of each. So let's say I have $100 and I want to enter this pool. I have to have $50 worth of SGB and $50 worth of Canary Dollar. It has to be an equal split. And then I would come here, provide liquidity, provide even a ratio of each, and then they would give me the correct amount of corresponding LP tokens in that regard. I don't know the math behind that and what, uh, how many LP tokens I would get from $100, but let's just say you'd get 10 from that. So then you'd get 10 LP tokens that would show up here. You would then come back to Flare Farm. And you would then see here that you would have uh or you would just click allow and then you plus st press stake and then it would show your 10 lp tokens that you could use to now enter this pool so in flare x when we do this in the liquidity section when we get our lp tokens these lp tokens it's a singular token this lp token is a singular token but it represents two tokens sgb and canary dollar so that's what i'm talking about um when i was referring to this when you're staking the two assets to two asset pools, keep in mind you are to enter them, you would need what are called LP tokens. That's what I'm talking about. The LP token represents various assets, two assets. Okay. So let's get into the slideshow once again. Before we get into strategies. So two asset staking in DeFi offers much higher interest yields to liquidity providers, you. And these yields are determined simply by supply and demand of the assets that you are providing. So what processes, and this is a question that you may have, um, what processes and uh, what processes and determines the supply and demand of all of these assets with, within a protocol or decentralized app? Well, it is what we referred to earlier in the course as an automated market maker. You may remember that. Um, it's one of the newest, it's a, it's what allows the capability of all this to be taking place in a decentralized manner. Um, and just understanding automated market makers here. So AMMs are smart contracts that facilitate the trading of assets in the protocol using ma mathematical algorithms that match buyers with the right sellers. So they would match a buyer, someone who wants to buy Bitcoin with their Ethereum. They would match that with someone who wants to sell their Bitcoin for Ethereum or you know, vice versa. So they would just match the corresponding people with each other, the corresponding buyer with the right seller. Um, and this works the same as an order book in traditional markets, as in they match each buyer with the seller and vice versa, except with AMMs, it is automated to keep the middleman out. An AMM has two essential components, which are first liquidity pools and second liquidity providers. So the, the liquidity pools in essence power the DeFi marketplace of all of these many different platforms and allow the users on those platforms to buy, sell, borrow, lend, and swap their assets and tokens and whatever service or protocols that they have within those dApps. Um, and so and the, liquidity and the liquidity provider delegates and locks up their assets and earns incentives for it. And it works similarly to traditional CDs, certificates of deposit in the way that the longer you lock your assets up, for, yeah, the longer you lock your assets up for, the more you earn an APY. So, 
you know, the, the less liquid that your assets become or are, the more you'll start to earn. Uh, so note here is as supply and demand and the overall popularity of the DeFi sector increases, the interest rates that we see now will be reduced because there will be more individuals and liquidity providers to distribute the fees of these platforms, dApps, protocols, et cetera, too. Um, and so as there's more people to distribute to, you know, there may be the, the same amount of fees or an increased number of fees, but with that, that increased number of people to distribute to, there's just less to go around. Um, and so now let's get into some strategies. We're going to do flare finance and osmosis flare finance. I'm going to walk you through on the mobile app. So I will see you over there. So here we are in the Bifrost wallet. So this is the, I've already shown you this app. This is in the app store or Google play store. If you're on that. Um, but basically, so I already have my songbird in my wallet here. Um, and I'm going to show you where you can get Songbird and the process of getting it from the exchange BitTrue. I like BitTrue. And I'm just going to show you how to get it from there, um, just so there's no confusion in that regard. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that, and then we're going to go from there. Um, so first, let's go to BitTrue. If you sign up, if you sign up with this or any, there's not a ton of platforms that offer the purchase of Songbird. Um, and that's specifically because it is a test token, a test net. Um, but you can get it on BitTrue, I believe, Kraken, KuCoin, um, and, a, and a few others. But BitTrue, I just like BitTrue and their, their user interface. And I've just had, I've had nothing but um, simple, simple times with it. So let's get into here. So... If you go up in the tab here, click on the top left, you can see if we type in SGB that in order to buy SGB, so you see we have SGB slash USDT, and SGB slash XRP. So what that means is that you need either USDT or XRP to buy some SGB on this platform. You can't just use your bank account to purchase SGB. You have to um have either usdt or xrp so now that we know that we need either usdt or xrp we can come to coinbase is another exchange i like to use um, and i know something throughout this course is you've probably been making a lot of accounts that's why i hope you've been writing them down and keeping them on a sheet of paper diligently so that there's no confusion for you in the future and you're never wondering what was my password what was my seed phrase what was my you know all this stuff You'll have it all written down so you know the accounts that you have out there and the, the in information pertaining to each. But anyway, so Coinbase, you can purchase USDT right through here. You'll put, push that US, that uh, buy button. Just type in USDT. Go here, buy it after you link your accounts. Um, after you do that, you can simply click that send button at the top. The user interface might be a little bit different if you're on a desktop doing this. Coinbase is interoperable with um, the web, with desktop. Um, but anyway, you just send it the same way we did our exchange to wallet before, how it shows you, just send that over to your, and I wanna just show you, so I'm gonna click deposit here. We're gonna type in USDT, click on it. And so this is what I wanted to show you because there's ERC20, TRC20, BEP20, um, and what you're gonna wanna click is ERC20. ERC20 just means it's on the Ethereum network. We're buying USDT, which is an Ethereum token. It's an Ethereum-based token. So we're going to click that one. We're going to copy that address. We're going to come back to Coinbase, and then you just put the, that address into your, you know, the tab. Um, so that, that's simple. One thing you're going to experience if you do this, the USDT method rather than XRP, is you might experience probably close to $10 in fees along the way. Um, and part of that is Coinbase taking fees. So something you might want to do is maybe use Uphold and purchase XRP and then send a bit through that way and then trade into uh, um, SGB. You might save yourself, you know, $10 because XRP is much, uh, the fees for sending things is very cheap, very cheap. Um, we're talking pennies, fractions of a penny. So um, 
After you, you would then have your USDT or SGB in this account, you would type in SGB here and trade into it. Um, I'm going to go with as if we were going to use USDT. So simply what you're going to do, let's say you bought $50 worth. We'll just put in our $50 and we're going to get 890 Songbird as you can see right here. So after we do this, we're going to press buy SGB and then we're going to come back. After we do that, it should take a couple seconds. You'll see your SGB in your account. You'll click withdraw. You'll type in SGB. You'll click the Songbird network there at the bottom. Um, and then what we're going to need next is our address to send this to. So where's our address at? We want to send it to the Bifrost wallet, right? So go to Bifrost wallet, click that arrow at the bottom there, click receive because we want to be receiving in this wallet. Click the Songbird token, tap to copy the address, bring it all back over to um, BitTrue. Let's paste that. There we go. Let's verify those last few digits, 44CE2. 44CE2. Perfect. So we know what's right. Then you just click the amount you want to send, which I imagine will be all. And then you click withdraw. And then you should see it in your Bifrost account in a matter of you know minutes, seconds. Uh, might take just a little bit, but don't worry. But, okay, so that's finished. So now you should have Songbird in your account here. So now, if you wanted to just to quickly shed some light on that FTSO thing I was talking about, the governance type deal. Um, if you wanted to do that, once you see your Songbird here, you click on Songbird, click the three dots there, and you're gonna have to click your you're gonna have to click a wrap. Then you'll wrap as much as you want. You'll come back, and then once it's wrapped, wrapped Songbird. It has to be wrapped in order to delegate. So then you'll click delegate. Um, and then here you will have the ability to delegate and there will be multiple um, FTSO providers. So it's it's called the Flare Time Series Oracle. Basically what it does is provide price points for every single one of the assets that are on this network. That's what the FTSO is. And so by you delegating your assets to that, you earn in, in, um, in return for that, for delegating your assets to that cause. So that's what that is and that's how you're earning from it. It's a good way to earn some steady, just some steady income and it's paid out per week. Keep that in mind. So now we're going to go into FlareX. We're going to connect our, connect. Okay. We have all our SGB sitting here. As we can see our balance, perfect. We're going to come over to Flare Farm because that's where the liquidity pools are, right? We're going to scroll down. As you know, SFIN is the governance token. And the SFIN is actually a very valuable token. It's one, you know, there's only a supply of 10,000. And each token right now is worth about $22,000 per token. So not something to shy away from, but we want to find the most profitable pool right now. So we have 133% there. Okay, let's take a look. So as we can see, 133% on this one. This is the highest earning pool right now, offering the highest APY. So that's one that we would want to enter. Not only that is the highest highest pool, but we also have Canary Dollar. Canary Dollar is a stable coin. It's the stable coin of this network. Um, but it's Canary Dollar and SFIN that you're going to be locking up. Um, and as I've mentioned in the past, I like personally staking stable coins, um, especially when it comes to double asset staking. I really like doing at least one of my tokens of the two that I'm staking. I like them, one of them to be a stable coin just causes for more simplicity. Whereas when you're staking two volatile assets that go up and down all the time, it makes things a little bit more complicated for you. Um, but anyway, so we found the pool we want to enter, right? Which is this SFIN. And canary dollar pool so in order to enter it we need to get lp tokens we need to get at least we need to get lp tokens that represent the this pair as and canary dollar so we'll go over to flare x you guys should be somewhat familiar with this just because of the little intro i did before what was it x-fying canary dollar sorry i forgot already 
S fin and Canary Dollar. Yes, S fin and Canary Dollar. So we're going to come to Flare X. We're going to go to the liquidity section. S fin and Canary Dollar. Okay, here we are. This is S fin Canary Dollar right down here. And so in order to enter this, we know that we needed to provide a 50 50 ratio. So half has to be S fin, half has to be Canary Dollar. So let's go over to the swap section of Flare X. And I'm going to just go ahead and swap all of my SGB and not all of it because the fee token of this platform is SGB. So you want to leave yourself a little bit left over for the fees that you incur by doing that, all this. Um, if you don't have the appropriate funds to um, transact because you don't have enough SGB, then you're going to have to go and purchase SGB on Coinbase and send it, you know, go through that whole process again because you don't have any. Um, okay, but anyway, we're going to swap that into Canary Dollar. And I have $4.00. An SGB for fees. I'm not going to spend four dollars in fees. It's just a little cushion. Um, but anyway, we're going to go back. Now we're going to be switching from Canary Dollar into SFIN. So as you see, we have 53 S or 53 Canary Dollars. And so as we know, we have to provide a 50-50 ratio, right? So I'm going to just slide this bar over to the 50% mark. And it's as simple as that. They do the math for you. You don't have to do any calculations. You simply just press swap canary dollar to SFIN, confirm, boom, close. Transaction six, successful. We're going to go to the liquidity section now because now we have we know we have equal parts. We're going to come down to the SFIN and canary dollar pool. We're going to provide liquidity. I'm going to type in 26.7069. And it automatically puts in the number up here as well, which is nice. So we're going to press provide liquidity, confirm. Boom. And that is done. So if we scroll at the top, we will see our pool up here. We have 0.16, basically 0.17 LP tokens. So and that's just because SFIN is a very valuable token. And so you need a lot of money if you want to get at least one LP token. Um, I'm just kind of showing you guys this as an example, and I've also mentioned, or I've, I've also mentioned that my goal of this platform is not to earn a lot. I'm using a small amount of money to develop my strategy for this platform. So when the mainnet launches, I am prepared to go because the earlier you are to these newer platforms, the uh, more you're going to earn as being an early provider. So keep that in mind. That's why I'm developing my strategy. I'm trying to, to develop the best strategy I possibly can so that I'm able to earn the most that I possibly can when the mainnet launches. So now that we have our LP tokens, we know we can enter that pool, the SFIN Canary Dollar pool. Because now we have a singular token, a singular LP token that represents the SFIN and Canary Dollar tokens. So we found our pool, start staking, slide that over to 100%. And there you can see we have our tokens right there. So we're going to click stake, confirm, and you can see all the fees that I am incurring by going through this whole process. And all these fees are redistributed to the governance providers and also to the liquidity providers um, such as ourselves. And so boom, we have entered the pool. We now are in it. Um, we have staked 0.16 shares and you can claim this like right now I could click claim already because there's already fees that have been occurring, but I'm not going to because the amount that I've earned in this the second um, is not going to, it's probably going to be less than the fees that I incur by doing that claim. So I typically just claim every 24 hours. And then um, after that 24 hours, uh, when I claim it, I'm claiming my reward, which comes in SFIN. And then I take that SFIN that I just earned in that 24 hour period, and I come down to the SFIN pool where I can stake my SFIN and I come here and I stake it, right? And then every 24 hours, now I'm claiming my rewards from this pool and then I'm claiming from my SFIN pool and then I'm staking my SFIN again because all these rewards are paid out in SFIN so then I can come back and just restake it right back into SFIN, 
restake it every day, claiming and staking right back in every single day. Um, so that's my strategy right now. And it's going to get more, my, my strategy in the future will get more complicated. I'll of course update everybody on it. Um, but it's, it's going to get more complicated. It's very simple right now, as you can see, just because not every single protocol, not every single um, product that Flare is going to have in the future is launched right now. So in the future, they're not only going to just have Flare X, Flare Loans, and Flare Farm. They're going to have Flare Wrap. They're going to have Flare Mutual and Flare Mine. So there's going to be various other products, and that's when things will get a little bit more complicated. Plus, there's going to be tons and tons of more assets. As you can see right now, I think we only have a total of five different assets on here. We have one, two, three, four. Yeah, four assets right now on here that we're using, and there's going to be you know hundreds in the future. So uh, that is my strategy for this protocol right now. Just keep in mind that I'm not trying to earn a ton right now. The strategy right now is just to continue to educate myself on the platform and to uh, just be prepared for the future when the mainnet launches so that I am ahead of the game, I'm ahead of everybody else, and I'm able to earn the most. Uh, and so like I said in the past, I recommend educating yourself on this platform as it's going to be, it will be very valuable to you. None of this was financial advice, of course. Um, in my channel, I cover this channel, or I cover this, this DAP and all the protocols and the products that it offers in depth. So I'm going to bring you back over to my desktop and we're going to go through osmosis next. Okay. Welcome to osmosis. Um, so as we know, Kepler wallet is the wallet we need for this platform. I'm going to be showing you my exact strategy I'm using with my main account. I'm going to be using my test account to show you the strategy that I'm, I'm currently using and utilizing on my, my main account. So you're not going to see all my main account info. You're going to see my test account, but the test account, exactly what I'm showing you right now is exactly what I'm doing with my main. So what I want you to see is firstly that I'm going to use a small, pretty small amount of money for this, just what I have in my test wallet here. And it's that Atom that we sent earlier in the course when I was showing you how to send from wallet to wallet here. Um, but anyway, so we have 5.15 Atom, basically $2.7. And I am going to, firstly, we want this to be on osmosis so we can use it throughout the, the protocols. And so what I'm going to have to do is, as I said, get it on here. So we're going to come to the assets section. And this will apply to any asset that they offer here. They have a long list, um, but we want Adam specifically on here. So we're going to click deposit and you're going to get this extent, this Kepler extension that comes up and it's going to ask you to approve this. Okay. So now we have from, which is our Kepler wallet and then to, which is the, the osmosis platform. So we're just going to click max deposit. It's going to bring up the Kepler extension again so we can approve it. And here you're going to have to select the fee that you want to incur. So you could do five cents, nine cents, or two cents, low, average, or high. Um, and now the difference here is so just like Ethereum, Atom has a certain amount of transactions per second. Um, I, I believe it's definitely higher just because it's a different type of consensus method on this, on this chain. Um, but Essentially, if you were to click average or high, it's going to go faster. Like the transaction will go, take place faster than it would if you were to select low. But I'm going to go low because it doesn't matter. And it'll typically take, it goes pretty fast. Like watch, you're going to see it in real time go pretty quick here. And it's already done. It took five seconds as opposed to maybe getting it done in one. Um, I'm going to save the few cents, but... Here we go. So now we should see our atom in a few seconds. There it is. Okay. So we have 2.6 atom or 0.514 atom, $2.60. And so now we can trade this atom into any of our assets, but first we have to decide what pool we want to enter, right? 
And so the LP tokens that we've been um, that we have to trade into, you work a little different on this platform, and it's much 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 simpler in this. And I love it. Um, and that's part of the reason you hear me talking about osmosis all the time and how much I love it. It's just the simplest I've found staking to be with great rewards. And then you're seeing 50%, 40%, 30%, 60%. Um, and these used to be like last year, only like five, six months ago, the, these percentages were like up in like 200%. Um, and I've been in it, in it since probably eight months ago. Um, and it's just, this is what I mean. Like this, this platform here has gained so much popularity that these percentages start to go down. But so the, the pool that I'm in right now on my main account is UST and Osmo. So UST is a stable coin and Osmo is the native token of this platform. So I like UST or I, I mean, I'm not particularly fond of UST. I don't really care. Um, but the thing is, it's a stable coin. And I liked, as I've said, I like to pair stable coin and a, a volatile asset when I'm getting into two asset staking. It's, it's much more favorable to me, especially because 65% that we're seeing with this one is up there. You know, it's pretty competitive with the other, with the other ones you'll see on this platform, even though that this is one of the few that is offering a stable coin with a volatile asset. Um, and so as you can see with this is it also has the 65% in just the APR, but plus you get that 50% super fluid staking enabled. So that's super fluid staking. I looked into it a little bit and basically what it does is it just restakes automatically for you. So you don't have to do anything. It just keeps restaking your profits, just keeps on doing it. Um, so it compounds itself. So you don't even have to take care of it. Um, and in return, you're getting that 15%. Um, it's kind of a no brainer that you do it, but no, not financial advice, do what you want. But anyway, so now we realize that we want to enter we've decided that we want to enter this UST and Osmo pool. So we're going to come back to trade. We're going to get our 50-50 share, 50-50 split of those two assets. So we need, firstly, we need Osmo. So we're going to do half into Osmo swap. Kepler comes up. You got to approve it. All right. And transaction successful. And then we're gonna go add them to UST. We're gonna click max because now our max is half of what our other transaction was. So we're gonna swap it. And I like these things because it just makes it so much simpler than having to go through the math. Some platforms you have to do the math and it just, I mean, it's not that big a deal, but it's just, you know, more simplicity. I love it. So that transaction is successful and we're good again. So now that we have our 50-50 ratio, half Osmo, half UST, we can now enter the pool. And the LP token part of this is taken care of right inside of the pool, which again offers simplicity. My computer is lagging a little bit here. Give me a sec. Bear with me. All right, here's our pool. And once the beautiful thing about this, and I don't like the scrolling thing, how you have to scroll through the whole thing again and again and again. But um, once you enter these pools, it'll automatically appear at the top in a my pools category. But anyway, so we need 50% as they state. Yeah, 50%, 50%. So we have it. Now we're going to add and remove liquidity. We're going to enter this pool now. Um, and as you can see here at the bottom, it says single asset LP. So if you click that, it just allows you to stake a singular asset to this pool. Um, but as it states here, single asset LP allows you to provide liquidity using one asset. However, this will impact the pool price of the asset you're providing liquidity with. So the um, so this allows you to almost make this, well, not almost, but make this pool not only a double pool, double asset pool, but also a single asset liquidity pool. So you don't have to stake two assets. You could simply stake one, but the prices within this protocol, within the Osmosis platform are determined by these LPs. Are They're determined by the supply and demand within these L liquidity pools. 
Um, and so as they say, however, this will impact the pool price of the asset you're providing liquidity with. So since there's not going to be 50-50 balance because you're providing one asset without the other in this pool, it's going to cause a little bit of a, an off balance here. So that's going to that's going to result in a little bit of price fluctuation and the amount of assets because you can't have a 50-50 ratio like you can't have um, like 50 rocks and 50 bricks and then add one rock and expect there not to be any sort of um, any sort of change you know there has to be some sort of compensation and so that would maybe result in the in increase of weight on the bricks because there's one more rock, but there's still the same amount of bricks so that the amount of bricks, the weight of the bricks would have to increase to compensate for that addition of the rocks. So the price may fluctuate away from uh, where, how should I put this? So the price will have to compensate for the lack of stability in that 50-50 ratio, if that makes sense. There has to be an equal an equilibrium. And so by you providing only one asset, whether it's UST or Osmo, you're causing an offset. So that results in price reduction. Um, and so the, the price of your asset may go down, um, but you're still going to be earning rewards. But just to reduce all that com complex complexity, I'm going to go with the double asset. <laughs> so we're going to add liquidity. Hope all that made sense. I just want to be as in-depth as I can. I'm going to approve that. All right. So we provide, and now we have our LP tokens so we can click start earning. So we could do a day. And so this is a part that I want to cover. So. It's, there's a lockup period here. So you could do a simple lockup of one day. You could do seven days or you could do 14 days. 14 days gives you the earn most earnings. Um, that's what I'm doing on my own personal account. Plus with the 14 days, you, that's also the only time where you have the ability to get that super fluid staking, which is the additional 15%. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to click max, click next. Choose your super fluid validator. Yeah, um, and so the superfluid validator, so as we mentioned with the superfluid staking, it automatically restakes. So it restakes your earnings to these validators. As we talked about validators on a proof of stake chain, they ensure consensus and ensure security of the network. So what you're doing here is you're choosing someone for the superfluid staking um, to automatically delegate to. So I'm just going to click uh just go with b harvest uh doesn't really matter okay then we're gonna click bond and stake click that zero All right, so we are in. So as you can see, in the 14 days, we have bonded um, a 0 0.05 GAM. So GAM slash 560, that is the LP token. That's what it's referred to as. But at, every day, this is going to superfood inactive. You have superfood. Yeah, so every day, like in a 24-hour period, you're going to see this. some of these rewards the rewards from these pools are going to start being staked here. So in a 24 hour period, every 12, uh, let me bring you back to the home screen and it tells you. So the next reward distribution is in two hours and 29 minutes. It's at my time, um, 1215 central time. And so that's when you will be able to claim or you're not, not even claim your rewards. Your rewards are automatically distributed to your Kepler wallet. And in that pool, in this pool, you will then see, yes, so here we go. Then you'll see an increase in the amount of Osmo you have staked here. So it's automatically delegating. Um, and another beautiful thing, so you're going to see this increase on the daily. But also, 
you're going to be seeing Osmo pop up in your wallet down here at the bottom. So you can either see it there or you can just come into your Kepler wallet. And in the Osmosis tab right here, you're going to see your balance be up. And so one last thing I want to show you, I'm actually going to go back to my main account so I can show you this. Just to my Kepler wallet. So... Okay, so every single day, you are going to see osmosis pop up. You're going to have these rewards automatically distributed to you, right? Okay, you're going to be having these rewards automatically distributed to your wallet. And what you can do, obviously, they're going to be, um, obviously, they're going to be a portion of it will be redelegated to this, but that other that other half, I guess you could call it, is going to show up in your Kepler wallet. And what you're going to do with that to keep earning, not financial advice, but you're going to come to your osmosis tab and you're going to start doing the validator um, governance staking to earn even more rewards. So now you're earning rewards on your rewards. So you're going to click stake here. It's going to bring us to the, the tab we visited in the past. Okay, it's going to show us here. I'm I'm staked to got Cosmo Station. Um, I already have a pending reward. It's just not enough to where it's kind of worth it to claim right now. Um, but I'm going to click Manage, click Delegate. I'm going to click Max. I'm going to leave a little left over for fees. Delegate. I'm going to click Low. So you can see all the different things I've done on this platform. I'm, I'm constantly incurring fees and those fees are redistributed to the people within the platform that are providing liquidity, of course. Um, so as you can see, we're successful. And now I have 2.5 Osmo essentially staked here. And so every 24 hours, well, actually this pool right here, this pool is constantly updating with rewards because every time there's fees incurred, it's distributed um, proportionately to the right people. So as a validator staker now, now that I'm a governance staker, I am now earning rewards on every fee that is constantly occurring. Now, since be, since I have a small amount, I'm not going to earn as much as someone who has maybe a thousand Osmo stake to this, but you get the point. Um, and so now you're going to be earning rewards in this. So I, I usually just do a 24 hour period. So now every 24 hours, I'm going to be having Osmo show up in my Kepler wallet from the liquidity pool we've entered, right? This pool, you know, the pool we entered in the, the test account, the same one, same one here you see. Um, but also, so we're going to be we're going to be seeing Osmo pop up in our Kepler wallet, which we're going to then stake to the validator, the Cosmo station, Okay. And then after another four hour, 24 hour period, we're then going to be seeing that Osmo pop up again here. But then we're going to see uh, we're going to see Osmo also come from the governance staking from Cosmo Station in my case. Okay, so we're going to claim our rewards from that. We're going to have our rewards from the liquidity pool, and we're going to then restake it right back into the um, validator Cosmo Station. So then that's going to compound, and then the next day we're going to do the same thing, but it's going to slowly but surely increase over time and it's going to compound fast. Um, so that is my strategy on osmosis. It's something I will be, so I only have my liquidity in this is 131. I had 200 in it, but since, but that was when the price of Osmo was at like $8. And so that right there, you can see that even though I earned maybe 10 bucks in the past week with this from um, only $200 staked, I lost, I guess you could yeah, seventy dollars, but that loss is impermanent because I can still wait for those assets to come back up to where they were. I can still wait for Osmosis, Osmo to come back up to the eight dollar um, price before I exit the pool. So then I would then realize my losses, and we'll get into impermanent loss in a second here because it's a little complicated, and I have a few examples written out or a example. Um, but that's my, my procedure, my strategy on osmosis. I 
I enjoy Osmosis a lot, much simpler than like Flare Axe, where we had to go to de- se- separate places to get our LP tokens and you know all that non- nonsense. So um, that's it for that one. I am going to I'm going to bring you back to the slides. Okay, here we are back at the slides. And so now that we went through two strategies on double asset staking, I don't, you know, obviously I'm going to be updating this course in the future with strategies I find, new platforms I find, all that. But in the meantime, I don't want you to have to rely on me finding new platforms, finding new strategies, all that. I want you to be able to go out and find new DeFi platforms for yourself. So how do we do that? How do we find new DeFi platforms? Um, well, it's really just simple. It just comes down to doing your research. Um, but a good place, a good resource to do that is CoinMarketCap. So on this, you can look through the various platforms and the yields that they are offering. If you see a platform that intrigues you, whether it is the assets you can stake, so maybe you're holding an asset that you can stake on one of these platforms, um, or if it's the yield that it offers, maybe it's a high yield, just click on it and just start looking into it. So we're just going to go through maybe a, a, just a quick example. So as you, you can see, all your APYs over here. Um, this is also also the tab for or the section of impermanent loss. Impermanent loss is something that you want to factor in. Um, it's just a risk. So if it says low risk, that's a good thing. Uh, but if it's high risk and also high reward, you may want to take that. You can probably stake to it, but maybe use a smaller amount of money than, you know, an amount of money that you're okay with losing, right? Um, so we're, gonna, we're scrolling through. We see Sun. It's based on Tron. It also tells you, yeah, the, the chain it's built on, which is awesome. This is based on Ethereum. This is uh, Harvest. So Saffron, this is one I was actually looking into prior to making this video. Um, and they offer, so look at this one. 2,332. So it says that here, but I clicked on the protocol and that's not actually what they're offering. And I think these are just out of date potentially. Um, but we're just going to click on one. S5 and Ethereum. So this was built on Ethereum based on Ethereum. Okay. And this is what I did. I found a platform I was interested in. I clicked on it. And what we're going to do is just launch the app. And I just want you to start looking around. Like, don't, um, don't just look at the APY and be like, "Oh yeah, this is good. I want to do this." You know, do your research on the platform. Um, like, as you can see, this one, 69%, um, which is pretty good, right? Um, but they also have new pools over on KuCoin you can enter. So if we click on that. Now we're on the KuCoin chain. Click launch app. Now you can see all the other pools that you can enter. To. If they load, um, but either way, so this is just kind of just me navigating through, just kind of showing you my procedure. But first thing I do, if I see like, okay, I like some of these pools, I like that 70% AP, APR I could get. Um, you know, one of the first things I'm ever going to do is so here's the three things that I typically do when I'm looking into a new platform is I look into what crypto chain it's built on. So like, is it built on Ethereum? Is it built on Binance Smart Chain, Cardano? What is it? So in this case, we know that Saffron Finance is built on Ethereum, which I like. I like Ethereum a lot. It's one of my favorite cryptos. Um, secondly, I look at the TVL, the total value locked. Um, and I like to see if it's a high amount, but the thing about it is don't totally count the platform out just because it has low TVL. Like, let's take Osmosis, for example. Back in the day, that was probably offering very, very high yields. And as we know today, it's a very solid platform. But back then, maybe it only had, you know, a few hundred thousand in total value locked, or maybe a few million, as opposed to now where we have billions locked. Um, but my point is, is, back then, just because it had low value, like a low amount of total value locked, doesn't mean it wasn't a good platform because as we know now it is a very good platform for personal that's not my own personal consensus on it um so on here let's see if we can find so i mean you can kind of just look at this total value locked here we have almost a million here so close to two million dollars in total value locked on this platform so it's not a lot 
you know, I typically would look for more um, in a platform. So I'm not super crazy about that. But like I said, you don't want to totally count a platform out for that reason. So what you'd want to do from here is go and start reading into the platform, read into why they're doing what they're doing. What is their plan? Look into if they have a roadmap or not. So first thing I'm going to do is when I'm looking into a new platform is looking into the docs. Like as I, as you know, Flare Finance, I'm super, super fond of. I love it so much. Um, and I just love what they're doing. And, um, and I've done my research on it. I am very bullish on it because I've done my research, um, which leaves no room for confusion, no room for second guessing. But so you could read on their medium articles here. Um, I haven't done any of this. This is literally just like a, a test run, just a, a walkthrough of how I would do it if I was in your shoes, because this is how I would do it. So you can read their white paper as I clicked on before. They don't have their white paper out yet. It's coming soon, as you can read there. Um, but just start reading about it. Maybe look in some forums and see what people are saying about it, their experiences with it, um, and just ensure that everything is solid and you're not just attracted to the gold. You know, you're not just on that shiny object, object, object syndrome. Um, and you're doing financially educated decisions, not financial advice. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is a great resource, CoinMarketCap. We've used it in the past even just to grab data on like XRP, the token address, so we could add it to our MetaMask wallet on Binance Smart Chain. Um, so it's a very valuable resource. I'll link it in the description of this video so you can use it. But so that's how you do it, man. Just what crypto chains are built on, total value locked. Read the white paper, just do your research. That's that's the moral of the story. And so lastly, I want to get into risks. And so risks. So we have smart contract issues, and these are going to be recurring. Um, but so while audits done by third parties prior to the launch of the protocol can significantly mitigate risk, there will always remain an inherent risk with all smart contracts in DeFi. So look to see if you can find DeFi insurance for the staking pool you are entering. And that may be something you could also do when looking into a new platform like Saffron Finance. You could see if you could find some DeFi insurance out there. Um, that would be something good to know. Uh, secondly, we have rewards or APY. So when you see those these in yield farming, when you are staking anywhere, these are estimates and not guaranteed. So don't bet the house on it. Thirdly, we have asset risk. This is the inherent risk that you assume when you hold a cryptocurrency of any kind. And that is the risk. And that risk is the chance of the token going to zero or lower than you had bought into the cryptocurrency in the first place. I'm currently experiencing that with Osmo, as you saw. Um, that asset went down from $8 to now $3, a little over three. And so that's, you know, the inherent risk I, I took on. And then we have rug pulls. So there have been protocols out there that were solely developed to get as many people as possible to stake their assets there, which was of course incentivized by higher than average interest rates, and then run with the money through what is referred to as a backdoor in the code where the developer can execute this heist and take off with the money. So DeFi insurance can also protect you against things like this, which is handy to know. So look into it. Um, if you're going to enter any new protocol, could be could save you some money. So we have impermanent loss. And this one I left an entire slide to because it can be a little complicated. Um, you know, I left, I tried to break this down in as simple terms as possible. It might take you a couple times of reading over maybe this or of uh, reading over a couple other explanations because, you know, not every example and not every explanation is going to grab everybody the same way. So let's say you have $1,000 in ETH. Okay, and for this example, $2,500, ETH is going to equal $2,500, okay? So let's say you have $1,000 in ETH, which is 0.4, and you want to enter a two-asset pool consisting of both USDC and ETH. At the time of entry, USDC equals $1, and ETH equals $2,500. So you have to have a 50-50 ratio, as we know, which would then be 500 USDC and 0.20 ETH. Um, so now we have a 50-50 ratio, we, so we enter the liquidity pool and are in it for one month. In that month, we earn $300. That sounds pretty good, right? Um, but you also have to factor in that during that month, Ethereum went up to $3,000 a coin. So if we had just stayed out of the pool and held ETH, we would be up $500 instead of just the 300 So our permanent loss in this case 
would be $200. So it is not permanent or impermanent uh, until you get out of the pool and back into Ethereum. You could just stay in the pool and wait for ETH to drop back down to $2,500 or less. Um, so either way, you still made money, but this was an example as if the token went up while you're in the pool and not down. So let's think of my example of osmosis. I started in that pool, UST and osmosis, uh, for at $200. I made $10 in the past week that I've been in it, but that price also went down to now like just over three or $4. And so I'm down and you know, my total liquidity is now $130. So I'm, I'm down 70, but I also made 10. So my impermanent loss is $60 and it's only impermanent because I'm not trading back into UST. I'm not going to trade out of my Osmo to realize that, that gain, that loss. So that is, and it also doesn't make sense because I plan to stake for the long haul, not just a week. Um, but also with this example, I want you to note that you could have just held on to your ETH and staked it in a single asset pool, realizing the gains of the assets from that 2,500 to 3,000, um, as well as the 4 to 8% you would receive on that platform you staked it on. So that could be crypto.com, could be uphold, whatever it is, there's many out there. But that is, again, assuming the asset goes up and not down. So single asset staking is safer but does not offer as high of interest rates um so maybe re-listen to this a couple of times re read over this a couple of times if uh, it's not quite clicking with you um sometimes maybe it just takes experiencing permanent loss to to really grasp what it is um, i've experienced it and i've read over it multiple times to fully understand it so that is it for two asset staking i hope you guys got a lot of value out of this one and in the final we're going to cover Acquire Finance, um, Acquire Fi. It's a new platform that's out there that you can. Um, it's a new platform that allows you to acquire businesses or sell your business in a decentralized manner. So that'll be next, and then we'll wrap up this entire course with a just with some final words and some final things to to leave you with. So I'll see you over there in the next video.